Hey everybody, this is Adam Kogesh outside the DC Superior Courthouse again. Nothing superior about it except the uh, undeserved sense of authority. And I had court this morning again with Judge Patricia Broderick. And fortunately, as you might have guessed by now, I'm not going back to jail today. That's right, I was threatened with jail time again for probation violations stemming from fabrications created by Officer Parker. That's right, my new probation officer. And there are a couple of important points, I think, from, from what happened today. And this was uh, not my first time defending myself in court, but only something I started doing relatively recently. And it's extremely satisfying when, when you're confident, you know what you're doing, don't have someone represent you, don't have a lawyer, unless you, unless you have a really good reason to, to, to feed into that other part of the racket. But more importantly, as you probably know, yesterday my fiance Macy produced a video for this YouTube channel uh, called Is Adam Going Back to Jail Tomorrow? Asking people to call in to the judge and to the probation officer, supervisor, Officer Sims. And uh, while I was traveling, I got to see some of the responses to that and, and I read the comments on the YouTube video. And I've, I've never seen the kind of support that we had yesterday. I mean, it was just, it was amazing that, that so many people were calling and they were talking about how they were communicating and they were talking about, you know, leaving polite messages and voicemails being full and all of that. And it, it was, I mean, at first, thank you, baby. I love you. It's, it's just I, to have, to have you in my corner from across the country when something like this is happening really means the world to me. And to everybody who called, I love you. I mean, this was, this, seriously, going into court today, knowing that I could stand my ground with the confidence that, that I have this kind of support behind me and, and, and enough people who believe in freedom was absolutely critical going in there. I went in and I, I called out the probation officers for line. I, 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 call, I told the judge, like, hey, this is the record. You can see their statements that they're making right now contradict the statements that they wrote, that they signed that said, I'm a danger to the community because I'm such a dangerous YouTuber. Remember, all of this started with a YouTube video and I actually called out the judge too and said, like, this doesn't make any sense. You know, what are you doing? Like, what is the actual objective here? And the idea of missing this made up meeting that Officer Parker created out the window, missing the deadline for my mental health assessment out the window, because they didn't have any record of that. You know, they're, they're, they're just using this as an excuse to harass me. And being able to do that, I mean, it was, it was so empowering to have the confidence to be able to go in and and make those accusations properly and appropriately and just as a, as a little aside it was it was a lot of fun afterwards when we were waiting outside the court that, that one of the uh, younger local gentlemen who was in there for some other criminal charges said that uh, he loved what I had to say that it was a lot of fun watching me in court and so I, I really um, was really proud of that and you know we talk a lot about building a free society, uh, uh, you know, abolishing government so that we can have a free society. But it's not so much about defeating the old system as building the new system. And a free society requires accountability, requires people to stand up for what is right, for justice, to stand up against those who would lie to get people sent back to jail for victimless crimes. And we're doing that. This is it. This is an example. I mean, like the the the, the, the freedom fans that, that we have here are doing it, and we're doing it to the greatest criminals left in society. Those who put innocent people in jail. That those people for victimless crimes still go to jail here. And you know, there's uh, the, the the harassment about this. Just to go a little bit further, uh, for those of you who have been on probation, you understand what it's like to have you know, your your life kind of essentially in someone else's hands. If you don't do exactly what they say, they tell the judge and, and you go back to jail. Unless you can pull, you know, like what what I was able to just do in there. But like even today, she couldn't she couldn't resist getting one more thing and she said, I, I failed to sign the gun registry paperwork. So 
it's not true, by the way. We she, she dra with the judge's order. She dragged me over to this bit next door building and had to stand in line and go through security again. And oh, it turns out Adam filled out his paperwork properly two years ago when he was supposed to. But that doesn't stop her from being confused and using that confusion to disadvantage me, to make me fly across the country again. So I was able to, to kind of back the judge into a corner a little bit because she said that the only thing she was concerned with was this mental health evaluation. And I, I've actually already got one done. I had one signed uh, by a psychiatrist who said, you know, I'm not a threat, but now they want, they want a formal form filled out that says all the ways that I'm not crazy. And one of the, uh, you know, issues in this that, that I have a major objection to is, and, and they've tried to get me to see a, a, a shrink here at, uh, they have uh, mental health services in DC, they have a court mental health thing. And I said I refused to. The last time I went to see a government shrink was at the VA when I got five prescriptions for having trouble sleeping with PTSD, three of which had suicide listed as a side effect. I mean, you wonder why veterans are committing suicide at such high rates. It's really not that complicated. But you all know that forced medication happens and that, that when, when the government says, hey, you're crazy, you better take these meds, they're gonna, it's chemical lobotomy. And this really gets down to, uh, to, to, to the heart of, I think, what we're up against in, in the paradigm and, and one of these strategies that, that the government is using against anybody who would challenge its authority. We've seen other activists who have, who have gone down in similar circumstances, you know, and we've seen other people get, get screwed by the legal system. But the basic gist of this is, oh, you don't like the government? You mean you don't like violent thugs having a monopoly on power and putting innocent people in jail and taxing half of your income every year? Like, really, you don't like that? You don't like us having these wars and you don't like us killing children with drone strikes? You don't like the police state? Gee, you must be crazy. We're gonna have a shrink look at you and if our shrink says you're crazy, we're gonna force you to take pills. So. I think it's because people called in, because I had that support, because I was able to stand that ground and make my case, I was able to say, no, I refuse to uh, sign a HIPAA release. They wanted me to sign a HIPAA release so that, that, that essentially all of my mental health assessment would be public record. I said, no, I'm not going to do that and I'm not going to see a government shrink. And the judge said that uh, if I get this mental health evaluation completed to her satisfaction with a form fully filled out by a month from today, that she might, she reserves the right to change her mind, of course take me off uh, supervised probation until the end of my probation, which is January 17th. That's right, I've been on probation for almost two years already. And they're still messing with me. You know, last time I was in court, I gave the judge a copy of Freedom, and she took it, and I asked her today when everything was done if she had read it yet. She said she was waiting for my probation to be up. So we shall see if maybe she will finally see the light and understand why some of us might possibly oppose government, and that really, we're not the crazy ones. The crazy people are the ones who are supporting the system and complaining about it and not doing anything. So to all of those of you who are a part of this beautiful dance forward of humanity towards a free society, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for being a part of this. And I don't know, we'll just, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep spreading the message. You know, we got the book has now cleared over a million downloads. We've got our third printing run in the works right now. And it's because of the love that it's all possible. So you're supposed to have a, a record of this in, in mm -hmm. your files? Mm -hmm. And you didn't get that? Mm -mm. That's why I'm asking. That's why I'm mm -hmm. never in court. So you, so you come here to, to check, right? You could have come here to check before going to court, right? I don't think you really appreciate how every time you screw up something, it affects me. I have to fly across the country. Do you know how much that costs? How much my time is worth? I don't think you really care. And right now is just more proof of that. You just drag me around from office to office to, to, to straighten out your mess up paperwork.
So your job is to supervise people on probation, right? Is that correct, Ms. Parker? I'm a, I'm a client. I believe you have to talk to me. You can't just ignore me. Are you serious? You're just going to ignore me? Like you're not going to answer basic questions? What, what is your job as a supervisor? I mean, I, I'm, I'm referred to as a client. You're supposed to talk to me, right? You're supposed to advise me? Not ignore me? Thank you. So, this is the last address of record in court that he signed in court that he signed today. Okay. Saying that he lives here. No, no, that's not true. That, you, well, you, this, stop lying about me and making this stuff is up. The this is absurd. Of record. I did not say that I live there. This is the address of record that she lies. lays in court that I sent the notice to the judge saying that that's the address that we have. That's the last address of record that we have. Right. I don't know if he lived there or not. That's the last address of record that we have. So what I'll do is I'll just keep. Well, he signed. This is this is the address that he signed to that. He put to that. This is this is that's his name. Just a mailing address. So what is your what is your obligation as a, to your clients as a supervisor, Miss Parker? You on supervision, right? Yes. So you know you, Mr. Jackson, went over that with you, correct? No, not really. Yeah, he did. We well, well, I want I want to make sure your understanding is is is. I don't have to what go over that again because you know about supervision. You've been on supervision for two years, so. Well, actually, it was never explained to me what the purpose was, it was. and it gets it, it keeps was. getting changed. Well, let me under, not, let me ask. What not, is it's not? It has what is, not been. What changed. is your understanding of it's what the not, purpose is? I'm not. It's not been. It has not been changed. Could you remind Everything me? Everything has been. No, I cannot. You can read, right? Where do Where do I have it written? The purpose of my probation in court. When you went to court, the judge no. told you you was convicted of a felony. Correct. It was. Uh, it was convicted. Uh, not, it wasn't a conviction. It was a. Uh, I'm sorry. You wasn't convicted. It was a plea. Well, you were plea. You plea and you agreed to be probation, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, your probation is your charges are. Let me go over that. You want me to review that? What you? No, said? I just want to understand what said, is the, the role and the purpose of the supervision. Say, you okay. were convicted. You were pled guilty to mm -hmm. carrying a pistol without a license, possession of an unregistered firearm, destruction of property. On the, right? No, there's nothing destruction of property. Destructive device. Yeah, it's an important so, distinction. What you should do is get a copy of your court order. I have that. Okay, then just read over there, and that gives you probation. Well, what that is the purpose of our relationship then? What do you What do you see as the? I'm purpose a probation of the officer. You're a probation. That's okay. It. Thanks. Have a good day. Sorry about her.